Okay, so here is a test run of how to analyze the cells um, using Amaris. Just open up Amaris. Should load. Just wait for the camera to readjust for that. Okay, so just come up here. We select open. Browse to where your file is. In this case, it's on the desktop. Uh, you can hit resample at this stage if you want, and you can check to see what your sample looks like. You can alter the things. We're going to be everything's okay for this one, so we we'll just hit okay. You can see here that it's opened up. In this case, I've already done some analysis on this over at the right here. You'll see here, but we'll go through running through this again. So I'm just going to take off some of this. Just de deselect all of these, so we'll go back to a normal looking population here. Okay, so what we want to do is you're going to hit this little button here for uh, to create some new spots. So we hit that. This should bring up a new window which looks something like this. It's a little bit newer, it looks a little bit different on the newer versions. We're not going to track the spots over time, but we are going to have different regions, but we're not going to process the entire image, so we just have those two things entered. So the segment of region of interest and a different spot squaring regions. And then you hit the little blue button to go forward to the next step. This then brings up a window which looks like this. You can now, by selecting the select button, you can now come back and you can move this around. We're just going to have a go at uh, one of these cells. So what you can do is by using the slider down here, you can slide through. You can find a cell that looks good. Okay, so this one here looks interesting. Let's have a go at this. We'll just move this around, trying to make sure that we get minimize any other cells that are in that field. Okay, so this one drifts quite a lot, so we know we're going to have to start down here a little bit to get it in. Still comes out a little bit. It's going up, so we need to go up a little higher. We can probably bring this one in here a little bit and out. It's looking pretty good. Let's go through until you have a look. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so pretty happy with that. You can come here and you can reduce the time. So if we know, for example, that this cell goes through mitosis relatively quickly by looking at the frame number down here, you can see on this, we're going to go through there. Okay, so we know that it goes into mitosis around about frame 111. So we can reduce that to minimize any background. We then hit next. We have an estimated diameter here. Let's see if I can focus that a little bit better. Of, I find 0.5 to be the best. And we include background subtraction. It'll take some time to go through this, so I'm just going to hit pause while we wait for that. Okay, so this is what happens. Um, you'll end up with the first uh, quality threshold that we can apply. You can apply a whole lot of different um, kinds of thresholds, but I've been using quality as the main one. I normally find that um, you can have a, a maximum here and you can normally start at around about 85 generally. You can see here that you'll get automatically, it'll give you an indication of just how many dots you have selected. So now at an 85, for example, we have uh, 8, uh, 9,510 dots being selected out of a total of this huge number here. So obviously there is a lot of misclassification without the thresholding. So you can see here now on this cell, that we have uh, at the very beginning of this movie, or actually, sorry, this is at the end, we still have a couple of dots. 
which is OK. But as we click through, going back, OK, we can see there's quite a lot of dots in the cytoplasm. So this isn't good, so we need to increase that threshold. So we're going to come back here to 90, go to 90, see if that improves. OK, it's a little bit better. Go through now. OK, we're still getting some some in the cytoplasm. There are some you can see being picked up in other cells. We'll have to go through and manually remove those. Get the focus right. OK. So, that was still a little bit too much, so we got up to 95 here. Hit enter. Now let's go and have a look through again the movie and just see how good that's looking. And see there is pretty good. There's not too many dots happening in the cytoplasm, so pretty happy with that. Towards the end of G2 it does get a little bit uh, crazy. And we'll clean that up with the next uh, thresholding system that we can use. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Gives us a total of around about six and a half thousand dots, which is okay for a control. So this is a control cell. So we'll click next. It's now going to chug away. We then have the option of using an absolute intensity or a local contrast. I'm not quite sure which one to use, so I just uh, played around with both, and I've found that I got slightly better results, uh, consistent results with absolute intensity. Um, so that's what I've been using. You then click Next, and it'll bring up a window. Here, uh, I normally start at a threshold of about 500. You can see this automatically reduces down, so if I go back to the default, which is 50, you can see that you've got, well, lots there, it's too much. So I normally find about 500 is a good way to go. This should bring back down to basically nothing. So you're just staining again the, the nucleus, and it'll help get rid of any dots. So you can see here, for example, there's still a little bit much out in the cytoplasm there. So we might increase this back up to 550. Okay, so that's uh, now looking like that. I'm reasonably happy with that. You could increase it to 600 if you really wanted, but I think for this it should be okay. So now the final step is just to hit this little green button to finish the analysis. It's going to calculate it through, which could take a little bit of time. You can see here, depending on how fast your computer is, it could take a while. So I'll just let that go through. It's going through fairly quickly. And now we're done. So you can now see it's found all the dots. You can come back over here to this window here, just let it refocus. We can click Sophia to make it look a little bit nicer. You can make the rendering higher quality if you like. You can change the color to green, for example, so it picks it up. So you can see all these things happening here. We can now see that we have green dots, hopefully. See, we have nice green dots there. And if we go through the movie, you can see that on the most part, there is a pretty good picking up of the dots. You might have to go through and manually remove some of those. But it's pretty good. Okay, so that's the basic starting of it. You can go back and tweak those settings again if you like by hitting this button and then going rebuild and start back at the beginning. You can also, by clicking this little button here, you can get statistics. So you just don't have to go forward. Ah, hang on. In this case, um, I have to go and actually edit some settings. I'll be back in a second. We do need to actually edit some dots, and if you do need to remove dots, you go to the edit button here, and then you can uh, move in, so we can zoom in by navigating, in this case, on the file. Let's just go through and we'll find an, uh, a dot that's inappropriate. So there's a couple of dots up here, for example, that are inappropriate. We can zoom in, go back to this select button, you can come here, 
you can select it. You can just by left clicking you can select the dot. You can then come back here and you can click delete. You can also, if you can hold shift down at the same time, uh, which I'm going to try and do with not enough hands. Okay, so you can hold down shift. You'll then be able to actually delete it automatically just by left clicking on that dot. So it's very tedious, but you then have to go through and just do that for each frame. So we'll now let them go to another, the next frame, or the previous frame. We can now see that there's still some more dots there. So we can then, again, holding down the shift key, we can go through and we can click. You can, Chris, you can undo that if you make a mistake, and if you actually need to add back in a dot, for example, you can, by using the mouse, you can make it the, the dot bigger or smaller. such as that, and now we have that. We can also then go back and just delete those again. Okay, and so that's how you add and remove dots to clean up your data. Okay, and that's the end of it. Thank you. To make sure that you have all the statistics uh, that you want from this, you can go to Preferences here. You come across to this menu here and you go to Statistics and you just need to make sure you go through all of these and click that you have everything that you want so for surface we don't really need to worry about it. it's the spots menu so just go through and just might as well click most of them um, density max uh, we don't really will need to worry about trick but we want volume we don't need to worry about velocity or any track speed because we're not worrying about that. We do want total number of spots, so make sure that one is there, definitely clicked. And then hit OK. And now we can go back to the statistics, and you'll see now here that we have uh, some data showing up here. So you can go and click on the total number of spots, and you can see you've got 6,205. Here you can see a nice graph that gives you representation of when the maximum dot volume is going. So it's peaking at around about four or half, five hours or so. Yeah, four hours and 56 minutes to be exact. There. You can then go to the detailed. You can have a look at all those different things. Normally the average value is more at the most interesting. You can have a look at the area, for example. You can see here you have this nice double peak with a smaller second peak that we uh, see as characteristic of a control cell. The volume as well gives you a very nice measure of this as well. You can see it follows a very similar pattern, of course, volume and area related. And there's a whole lot of other interesting bits of information here as well. Intensity max, for example, which shows uh, the opposite. Okay, so you can then export this as a graph and to Excel by clicking this little button here. You can click this little button here and it'll save all of the data to, uh, expect to, to Excel. Um, normally I find that I just do the volume, for example. It's a little bit slow when doing this. You just click on this button and it'll export it all to Excel, which you can then use to make your graphs. And that is pretty much it.